I did call other people. But you're the only one that said yes. You're the only one that responded. God is looking for people that are willing to say yes to the call. I was in a grocery store. And I wasn't in the grocery store for an outreach specifically. I went with a friend because we had to get groceries. We had to, I, I was in the chicken, you know, the frozen aisle looking for frozen chicken. And I'm in the back and I'm looking at these things. And all of a sudden, a, 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 a lady walks past me, probably 70-something years old, with a shopping cart and passes me. Poof, gone. As soon as she passed by me, I felt this word in my heart just drop inside. It wasn't this audible voice or this voice that shakes you to the core. It was this voice that was just very strong but very gentle. That lady has a problem in her back and her joints. I kind of looked back, looked. I'm like, nah. And I went back to my stuff. All of a sudden, the weight of conviction drops on me. Boom. You ever felt that where you get a word and you're like, ah, oh, maybe God, and you ignore it, and all of a sudden that conviction comes? It's a good chance that it's God speaking to you. And so she was already gone. She went down another aisle. I'm like, wow, it's too late. She's gone. So I just made a deal with God out of my immaturity. I said, well, if I'm done with my shopping and I finish all my stuff, if I go to the front of the grocery store, I'll find a way to minister to her. Because often when God reveals these things, when he speaks to us something, it's not just a gossip about someone. It's because God wants you to do something about it. He wants you to pray. He wants you to minister. There's a, a reason why words of knowledge come. They're not just parlor tricks. If God speaks to you about something, he has a purpose for it. And many times I'll be in public and I'll sense something on somebody and, and I'll pray and God will touch them and God will heal them. But I was like, well, I wasn't necessarily in that mode, you know. I was like, I watched an evangelism video before, you know, that, during that day. And I was like, oh, it'd be cool if we met somebody that day. But I was still kind of in that flesh mode when she came. And I just said, well, if she's there, it's still in the front of the grocery store, I'll pray for her. I finished my stuff, get all my groceries, go to the front of the grocery store. There she is in the checkout line. I'm like, ah. So how do you start a conversation with her, right? How do you start a conversation with people when God speaks to you? Often what I say, instead of saying, excuse me, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? God has a word for you, wants to heal your body. People can be, whew. But I say, start with natural things and then go into spiritual things. Find ways of love, to, simple, to give a simple act of love, to show them that you actually care about them. And if they see that you actually love them, they're going to want to listen to what you have to say. And we've got to be careful that we're not treating people like a number or a testimony rather than a person Jesus loves. I didn't say this first service, but I've been in the midst of encounters because I teach evangelism. We take a lot of outreaches out to the streets in different communities. I've been in the midst of an encounter. And I thought to myself, man, if I can just get this person to this point in the conversation, it's going to look great on Facebook. If I can get this person to pray the prayer or get them healed, it's going to look awesome on Instagram. But we have to be very, very careful that we're not treating people like a testimony or a number, but we look at them the way Jesus sees them and find ways to bring that, to draw them closer to him. And so I just went up to her, and she was an older lady, so I said, can I help you put your groceries on the, car, on the grocery line? She goes, okay, sure. So I'm talking, doing a little small talk. Yeah, I'm from the United States. She goes, oh, my daughter's in the United States, all this. We're running out of time. And so I realized i got to cut to the chase. And so at the end, long story short, I just tell her, you know, God speaks to me sometimes about people. And while you were shopping, I felt, I say I'm a Christian, God speaks, I felt that you had a problem in your back and your joints. Is that true? She goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. She says, I cannot walk more than short distances without having lots of pain. I said, well, let's pray. And so we go out. It was the shopping mall, so it was in the middle of the kind of between stores. And I prayed. And when you pray for people, if you don't have a lot of time, that's okay. Because some of the most effective prayers can be some of the quickest prayers. Amen. We don't have to pray for 10 minutes. We also don't have to yell and scream at the top of our lungs or change our voice or speak in the King James or whatever. You simply just speak. You don't have to. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I lived in Africa for years, and they yell and scream. They get excited. But it's not a requirement for the power of God to be released. Why? Because when your sword is sharp, you don't have to hit so hard. Amen? Amen? Just because you have a loud voice, there's people that are drunk on the street and they have loud voice, but they have no spiritual authority. And then you got those praying grandmas, those intercessors. 
that have little voices, but they're powerful in the spirit. Why? Because they have sharp swords. Because they spend time in intimacy with the Holy Spirit, sharpening. They're in God's will, and they're, they're sharpening in that place, swinging their sword, and whoo, whoo, it just cuts. They don't have to work it up or strive something up. And so I just prayed. I said, Holy Spirit, we thank you for this lady. We speak total restoration in her back, her knees, joints. In the name of Jesus, come and touch her. She starts moving. She's like, it's getting loose. And I said, oh, let's walk. And I remember Richie Seltzer, he said, when you ask people to test their body as soon as you're done praying, you're going to see more miracles. It's actually true. Sometimes we'll say, oh, I'll be praying for you. I'll pray for you at home. And sometimes we'll forget, get distracted with something. Or we'll pray for somebody and we won't ask them to test their body. But sometimes when God puts a person in front of you, he's saying, test it right now because I have something for them in the moment. There's something about asking people to do something they couldn't do before that can actually release power into the situation. That what you actually just prayed did something. That you believe that your prayer has power to shift something. And even just now, you know, there were some people that came up and there was a lady, she had an a, a, a inch and a half. Pastor Cherise confirmed it was an inch and a half difference in her leg grow out just right here. She had an issue in her back, the pain left, and another guy had nerve damage, and he had a knee issue for a long time in the military. All the pain left him immediately. But I'll be honest, there was a moment in my flesh down here where I was thinking, this is a major issue. I might just pray and just leave it in God's hands after that and not ask him to test it. Also, Pastor Sharice was standing there. <laughs> or I th she was, or somebody was. But I asked him, I said, check it, move it. No, uh, uh, Eric Chandler was standing there. I said, check it, move it. And he's moving. He goes, the pain is totally gone. All the pain left his knee immediately. It was just right here. I said, like, praise God. I'm like, man. But I asked this lady, I said, try to walk in the grocery store. Because she said she couldn't walk more than short distances without having a lot of pain. So she's walking like this. We're walking about 50 yards in the shopping mall. She turns to me. She goes, I don't have any pain at all in my body, completely gone, all of it. I'm like, praise God. And she goes like this. This was her response. She goes, God sent you to me today. My response, I'm like, praise God, that's awesome. And this is what she said next. She goes, I have a painting of Jesus hanging in my bedroom wall at my house. This morning, I woke up with so much pain in my body. I looked into the eyes of Jesus on my wall, and I said, Jesus, please heal me today. And she goes to the grocery store. I'm thinking, wow, God, you used me to answer her prayer. That was my first thought. My second thought was, I almost missed it because of chicken strips. I almost missed this opportunity. She had just prayed that morning. And if I, if I had not said yes, what would have happened? Maybe God would have sent somebody else. I don't know. But I got, to, and, and she goes, you have restored my faith today. And I don't say this in a place of boastfulness. I am so honored. Every time God uses, I've seen thousands of miracles. So many people get touched, but every single healing I see to this day, I'm just like a little kid. I'm like, what? Every time I see the kingdom of heaven come to earth, whether it be stage four cancer healed, which I've had different testimonies of that, even to a little pinky getting healed, I'm just so encouraged every single time. We should never lose our wonder in that place where, you know, when you're in ministry, you see a lot of things and, oh, yeah, it's common. Yeah, it's normal. No. Every time the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, it just excites us. It encourages. And with that lady, right after that, I get a word drop in my heart again. And I've learned sometimes flowing with the spirit. I don't have a tissue box with me, but I'd use an example. It's like pulling out tissues out of a tissue box. You do one thing that God says, and all of a sudden, boop, another tissue pops up. And it's like that, walking in the spirit. And I got another word dropping my heart. I said, I feel that you're supposed to write a story about your life. She goes, whoa, I felt I was supposed to write a story about my life recently. It's a confirmation. And I left that day just like my mind is just like, God, really? Did you do that? Because it humbles us. We are not supposed to take credit for ourselves when God uses us. We are simply the electric wire that carries Jesus, that carries his power. Another example, we are the donkey that carries Jesus into Jerusalem. You know the story, Jesus coming on the back of a donkey, they have palm branches, they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. What if that donkey's like, wow, 
What if the, you know, look, he's looking at the other donkeys. He's like, they're worshiping me, man. No, they're worshiping the guy that he's carrying. It's the same with us when God starts using you. It is a vehicle for the gospel to be preached. It is a vehicle. Signs point to something. Healings, miracles, prophetic, it's not the finishing point. Jesus is the finishing point. They are meant to bring people to Jesus, to advance the kingdom of God. That's the purpose. We should never worship healings more than the healer. We should never worship the signs more than the the things that those signs point to. The gifts more than the gift giver. And so I'm going to end very soon, but I want to share one more testimony. This is a friend that I had for a long time. He was working one day. He was at his job about 45 minutes away. While he was at his, where he was, he hears a voice speak to him. Go home right now. He's thinking, I'm 45 minutes away. But the voice was very clear. Go home right now. He's like, okay. So he organizes his things. He works it out at his job. He goes home. He drives all the way back to where he lives. Once he arrives, he sees a woman on the ground. She was either passed out, but she was laying on the side of the street. He came to her and he helped her. He called an ambulance. I didn't know what was exactly wrong with her. I don't remember what was wrong with her, but he helped her. He got to be that person to possibly save her life. If he had not come, that lady might have died that day. At the end of all of that, he's debriefing with God. He said, God, thank you that you used me to help that lady, to call me home. But why did you call me to do that? Why couldn't you call somebody closer? There were probably more Christians that were closer to where I was than me, 45 minutes away from my home. Why did you call me and not somebody else? You know how God responded? I did call other people. But you're the only one that said yes. You're the only one that responded. God is looking for people that are willing to say yes to the call. God is looking, and, and, and guys, I'm sharing these testimonies, not to just point to myself or look at the supernatural. Testimonies prophesy. The word testimony, you can look this up in Hebrew, it means do it again with the same power and authority. That's what testimony literally means. And so when you share a testimony of how God has used you this year or in your life to someone, number one, it expands the realm of what is possible. It prophesies over people that if God did it before, God can do it again. And number two is we are giving glory to God. What does that mean? It means if we don't share testimonies, sometimes we can actually withhold glory that God could get. If we say, well, I don't want to be boastful. No, we boast in the Lord. And it actually gives God more glory by sharing what he does. He does. 